The land explored by our ancestors extends from Altai to the White Sea. The scientific expedition Trails of Nomads continues to unveil the path of our forefathers. A group of scientists, led by pilgrim of the 21st century Sapar Iskak, has already visited more than 50 countries. Scientists reveal the exciting secrets of the past. Watch an amazing story of a great journey in the Trails of Nomads program. What did the heavenly world mean for the Kok Turks? What feat being a test pilot did the first Kazakh cosmonaut Tokhtar Aubakirev perform? Why is the flight of the 21st century pilgrim Sapar Iskak into the stratosphere important? As it is written on the stone monuments of Kultegin and Bilge Kagan, our ancient ancestors called themselves Kok Turks. In this phrase, the word Kok is translated as the sky and not as blue. The heavenly world occupies a special place in the mythology of the Turkic peoples. To understand what the concept of Kokbori means, one needs to focus on celestial objects again. In legends and traditions, the wolf is described as an assistant of the Turks who, sitting on the top of the glacier, howled his sad song and was a kind of beacon indicating the way. There is another meaning. The wolf was sometimes seen in the form of a ghost among shaggy clouds. Such a worldview was firmly rooted in the minds of the Kazakhs and was passed on with blood. Since ancient times, the Turks, including the Kazakhs, have worshipped Tengri, the god of the sky. Therefore, such concepts as Tengri, blue sky, heavenly wolf, are sacred for Kazakhs. The Turkic peoples, including the Kazakhs, have had a yurt as their main dwelling since ancient times. It too had a certain connection with outer space. This is confirmed by both domestic and world scientists. The yurt is called the model of the universe. Shanurak of a yurt, its crown is a symbol of the sun. Four intersecting slats on the Shanurak mean the four cardinal points. Yeeks, the sun's rays, Kerige, the horizon. Even the mat, which is used to cover the yurt, is also in harmony with the heavenly world. The felt cloth from the Kerige to the middle of the Uix is called the Milky Way. And above, the part of the felt which is used to cover the top of the yurt up to the shiny rock is compared to a heavenly dome. If you lie in a yurt and look up through the shiny rock, you see the sky, stars. Thus, looking at the stars, a person feels like a part of the space. Every Kazakh from childhood grew up in harmony with nature. Lying in a yurt, he watched the heavenly bodies. Life on Earth is closely intertwined with the heavenly world. Our ancestors, in addition to worshipping this space as a cult, also scrupulously studied it. They even made a map of the stars. Thanks to the observations of celestial bodies, weather forecasts were made. Each star had its own name. The change of their places spoke of the upcoming natural phenomena. The ancestors knew exactly at what time the moon and sun would converge at one point. To carry out accurate calculations, it takes not one month, year, or even a century, but a huge experience of several tens of centuries. <laughs> From the point of view of world history, science first began to spread from the Greeks and Byzantines. 
However, studies of nature and the environment were first carried out on the basis of the experience of our ancestors. The ancestors, based on their astronomical knowledge and experience, compiled the calendar. With its help, they conducted traditional types of economy. They migrated to the summer and winter quarters, put the animals for fattening and lambing. They knew exactly the periods of sowing and harvesting. The accuracy of the calendar was very important. After all, the slightest errors could lead to large-scale disasters. All these economic needs encouraged ancestors to draw up a calendar based on the study of natural phenomena and its laws. According to the Kazakh calendar, the beginning of the new year is the month of Nowruz, March. March the 22nd is the day of the vernal equinox, that is, day and night are equal in length. This holiday has been celebrated by Kazakhs since ancient times, since the period of the Saka. Both the Saka and the Scythians knew when spring or summer began. Polar Star and Big Dipper have always served as a guide for ancestors. It is understandable that today's descendants are also striving into the sky to new knowledge and discoveries. For example, the hero of the Kazakh people whose name is inscribed in golden letters in the history of world aviation. This is a unique person, a pilot cosmonaut Kalik Kakarmane, hero of the Soviet Union Tokhtar Aubakirov. Tokhtar Aubakirov is the first representative of the Kazakh people to fly into space. But even before his space career, he had enough feats. Tokhtar Aubakirov is the first person who made a non-stop flight over the North Pole on a MiG-31 fighter. No, American star, France, Udar, Udar, the Americans, the French and the British and everyone else used catapults for flight. I didn't use it. The springboard is an innovation presented by me for world science. The new method has certainly triggered the world interest. Tokhtar Aubakirov could then take off from any military vessel on the Black Sea. He managed to lift his MiG-29 even from the meager platform of the cruiser Tbilisi. His courage amazed many. In a small town near Moscow, there is Tsagi, the Central Aerohydrodynamic Institute. We spent a lot of time there. There we measured and prepared calculations at what degree the springboard had to be set for a successful takeoff. After that, all this was moved into the computer. Then we modeled it and practiced. At first it was 7 degrees, then 14 degrees was the best option for us. For heroism and courage, Tokhtar Aubakirov was awarded the title of the Hero of the Soviet Union in 1988. He could have received this high rank earlier, since he successfully tested a number of new models of military aircraft. The Mikoyan Experimental Design Bureau keeps a list of approved 26 highly secret aircraft of the Soviet Union for test pilots. Tokhtar Aubakirov was the only Kazakh with access to these secret flights. His name is on the third in the list of the 10 best pilots who have made a great contribution to the development of world aviation. This list is kept in the World Aviation Museum in Washington, D.C. I, using the springboard for the first time, took off from the ship. This was a novelty to the entire world of aviation. No one has done this before. 
After me, of course, they repeated this, so my takeoff was included in the Guinness Book of Records. During the Second World War, Kazakh pilots performed a unique feat. Twice hero of the Soviet Union, Talgat Begeldinov made 305 combat missions during the war. More than once during enemy attacks, he showed resourcefulness, courage and heroism. The fascists called his plane Il-2 the Black Death. Kazakh women performed feats on a par with men. One of them is Kiwaz Dospanova. She was the navigator of a bomber. She participated in 300 combat air battles. Her plane was shot down 14 times. She was seriously wounded four times. Every time she returned to the battlefield. The division where he was served the 46th Guards Regiment was called Night Witches by the Germans. I want to say that the first Kazakh pilot was Abdirazak Artikov. In 1931, he entered a flight school and after completion, he served in the ranks of the Soviet Army until 1936. The second Kazakh is Zhakibek Moldibayev. In 1938, pilots from the Soviet Union were sent to defend Spain. There he fought for almost a year. Another Kazakh hero is Faisullah Akejanov. He took part in the Second World War. After the victory, he served in the Pacific Fleet. He was the first pilot of the plane of the Supreme Commander-in-Chief of the Air Force of the Soviet Union, Alexander Novikov. Sampar Iskak dreamed of becoming a pilot since childhood. From the 8th grade, he subscribed to the newspaper Soviet Aviation and read it with a great interest. From that period, he began to study the art of flying an airplane. The aircraft carrying mail from Kostanai to Arkalik landed near his house. The pilot's name was Sapargali Tenizbaev. Sapar Iskak helped him start the plane, and the pilot lifted the boy into the sky made several circles and landed. So the dream of young Sapar Iskak to be a pilot became a little closer. Until now, he considers the pilot of the mail plane Sapar Gali Tenizbaev to be his first flight instructor. This Orsk guy was five, six years older than me. In general, he was still young. I flew with him on the aeroplane with great enthusiasm. He put me in the place of the co-pilot, and we circled over Arkalik. And he taught me, showed me everything, told me how to become a pilot, talked about difficulties and advantages of the profession. We have always been like older and younger brothers. He died recently, three, four years ago. He was 80 years old. We have always had a good relationship with him. He ended his career as the commander of the crew of the An-24 aircraft. Sapar Iskak, following his youthful dream, planned to link his life with military aviation. However, the father, who returned disabled from the war, was very worried about the future of his son and did not let him into the military sphere. Once, while visiting Star City in Moscow, Sapar Iskak saw a MiG-15 aircraft near the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center and recalled his youthful dream. This was my dream. That was the plane I dreamed of. There I stood in front of MiG-15. This plane was once the world's fastest aircraft, and it flew into the air higher than the others. It was the pride of Soviet aviation. When I was still at school in 1957-58, I dreamed very much of entering a military flight school. At that time, the MiG-15 was the best aircraft in Soviet aviation. 
Our outstanding cosmonaut, Yuri Gagarin, was the first to fly on this plane. He trained on it. After that, all the cosmonauts prepared and flew on the MiG-15. Saparisca got his father's permission, if not in the military, then in the civil aviation. So he entered the flight school in the city of Buguruslan in 1958. And in 1962, at the Institute of Civil Aviation in Kiev. But civil aviation was not to his liking. Therefore, fate decreed otherwise, and he became not a pilot, but a builder. However, Saparis Kak did not leave his youthful dream. He always wanted to fly into the sky on a military plane. This dream only intensified over the years, and after a while, it came true. In 2009, a 21st century pilgrim flew into the stratosphere. There is not enough oxygen, so the wings of an airplane cannot hold it. There is no power and strength to fly. An airplane can only fly like a rocket. Therefore, such a height, 22 kilometers, cannot be mastered by many military aircraft. Getting up into the layer of the atmosphere, the stratosphere is not easy. For this, flyers should have excellent health, as well as special professional training. Sapari Skak, at the age of 69, was able to meet all the requirements. In the Russian city of Nizhny Novgorod, from the Sokol airfield, he took off on a MiG-29UB aircraft. This is a supersonic fighter. It can fly at a speed of two and a half thousand kilometers per hour. Sapari Skak was the co-pilot of the supersonic fighter and flew into the stratosphere. He performed all the elements of flying art. It was necessary to fulfill aerobatics. All military pilots should know this. The first figure is Nesterov's loop. It was first performed by him in 1930. You need to complete a closed loop in the vertical plane. The planet Earth is surrounded by an air shell, the atmosphere. It is divided into five layers. The first layer is the troposphere. Its height reaches 11 kilometers. The second layer is the stratosphere. Its height is from 11 to 55 kilometers. The third layer, from 55 to 80 kilometers, is the mesosphere. The boundary of the fourth layer of the thermosphere exceeds 700 kilometers. The fifth layer is even higher. This is the exosphere. Saparskak flew to the height of 22 kilometers. When you look from the ground to the horizon, it is a straight, even line. And at the height the horizon turns into a spherical line, then it rounds and ends. At this moment, there is a feeling as if you are in space, or at least at the first stage. The pilgrim of the 21st century Sapari Skak, wherever he is, always takes a Kazakh turquoise flag with him. He considers this to be his civic duty. The symbol of our republic traveled with him to the stratosphere. Isn't this patriotism and boundless love for the homeland? <laughs> Prior to my trip to Russia, I bought several Kazakh flags for my friends. One of the flags remained in my pocket. Therefore, when we were high, I filmed it on camera. Here it is. This flag is in my hands.
The armed forces of Kazakhstan are equipped with modern weapons and have a high level of personal training. There are flight regiments, divisions, a huge number of aircraft. They are supplied from Russia and other countries. Our Kazakh pilots fly on them. Resilience is a characteristic of our people. Flight art is also not alien to the Kazakhs, not to mention this study of celestial bodies, which the ancestors were engaged in since ancient times. There is evidence that a scientist from the medieval city of Oterar, Abu Nasir Al-Farabi, designed an aircraft in the Middle Ages. This topic was of great interest to the Trails of Nomads scientific expedition team. It requires separate research.